All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson, and my goal is to give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by making these complex critical care subjects easy to understand. I truly hope that I'm able to do just that, and if I am, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel down below. When you do, make sure you hit that bell icon and select all notifications so you never miss out when I release a new lesson. Now, real quick before we get started, I just wanted to remind you all again about the pre-order opportunity for my new program that I'm very excited about called ICU Advantage Academy. This is something that I've been working really hard to get this ready, and it's gonna include access to the full ICU Advantage library of videos, all of those without any ads, as well as the audio-only versions of each lesson and the lesson notes for each one as well. Now that's not even the best part, as in addition to all this, you'll also be able to earn CE credits, which you can use towards your annual nursing license renewal, CCRN CE requirements, or more. There's going to be over 30 contact hours worth of content that's available, and as I continue to make more videos, more and more is going to be added in there in the future. Now the Academy is officially going to be launching March 15th, and it is gonna have monthly, yearly, and lifetime access options, but if you are interested in pre-ordering before the launch, I'm offering 50% off the lifetime membership. So just follow the link down in the lesson description or head over to icuadvantage.com forward slash academy to take advantage of this awesome limited time opportunity. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and begin our lesson talking about dexmedetomidine which commonly goes by the trade name Presidex. So real quickly on our history and background, um, it was only recently approved in 1999 by the FDA, and this was for the use of a short-term sedative and analgesic, so less than 24 hours, for critically ill or injured patients who are mechanically ventilated in the ICU. Now, the short-term approval was given due to some concerns over withdrawal side effects like rebound hypertension, um, but these concerns regarding these side effects really haven't consistently been observed in clinical research studies. Now, dexmedetomidine is actually a selective alpha-2 adrenergic agonist, another example being clonidine, and its primary action that we're looking for is in the central nervous system to cause sedation and analgesia. Now, as far as the actual therapeutic actions of this medication, so like I said, it acts on the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor, both in the central nervous system as well as in the periphery. So by blocking the alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, it acts as a negative feedback loop, and they prevent the release of norepinephrine at the synaptic junction, which is what's used for messaging from one neuron to another or terminally to muscle. Now this inhibition of neuronal firing leads to the sedation and analgesia. So the way that this is accomplished is that it ultimately acts on the brainstem and this increases downstream activity of the inhibitory GABA neurons. Now this is different from other sedatives like propofol and our benzos that actually directly inhibit the GABA neurons. And this results in sedation that more closely resembles natural sleep leading to less amnesia. And then also unlike these other sedatives and opioids, dexmedetomidine is able to sedate without respiratory depression. So this is actually one of the big advantages of this medication. Now all of this said, um, it's certainly not as powerful as some of these other sedative medications. And anecdotally, you know, I've definitely found Presidex or dexmedetomidine to be something that is sometimes effective and sometimes not. So obviously it's really gonna depend on a patient by patient basis. Now, since dexmedetomidine works on the alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, which actually have a similar effect profile of our typical alpha-1 adrenergic receptors, specifically when we're talking about the heart and vasculature, that it can result in decreased release of norepinephrine from those synaptic neurons that innervate the heart and the blood vessels, leading to clinical changes due to this inhibition of those alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, and this can ultimately lead to things like bradycardia and or hypotension, among other things. 
All right, as far as our indications go, um, there's really only three approved FDA indications. So first, like I talked about, the short-term sedation and critically ill patients who are initially intubated and undergoing mechanical ventilation, as well as sedation for non-intubated patients before and or during surgical or other procedures. And then actually just recently in 2022, they did approve uh, sublingual dissolvable film or tablet doses being used to treat uh, acute agitation related to schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Now that said, we do have several off-label uses that it is also used for. Here we have things like sedation during awake procedures, so awake craniotomies or awake intubations. It's also used to prevent uh, post-anesthetic shivering. Um, it is used for the enhancement of sedation and analgesia in patients who are undergoing general anesthesia. Uh, it's really useful in maintaining sedation through extubation for patients who are prone to agitation, so we can actually keep this running as we extubate them and once they are extubated. It's also used in peripheral nerve blocks to prolong the effects of the analgesics. It has potential use in the treatment of alcohol withdrawal, as well as potential in combating negative cardiovascular effects of amphetamine and cocaine overdose. Now, as far as our contraindications go, obviously, if they have a hypersensitivity to the drug, that this is going to be a contraindication. We do want to use cautiously in healthy adults with a high vagal tone, so highly functioning vagus nerve. Use here may actually lead to bradycardia or even sinus arrest. We do also want to use cautiously in older adults and patients with hepatic impairment, uh, advanced heart blocks, severe ventricular dysfunction, hypovolemia, hypotension, diabetes, or even patients with chronic hypertension. As far as our adverse effects goes, if we go system by system with this, so first for our central nervous system, we're looking at things like fever, agitation, anxiety, chills, and rigors. Uh, for our cardiovascular, we're looking at hypotension, hypertension, bradycardia, atrial fibrillation, tachycardia, and ventricular tachycardia. For our ENT, we are looking at potentially dry mouth. For GI, we have nausea, vomiting, increased thirst, and constipation. For our GU, we have oliguria, decreased urine output, acute renal failure. Hematologic, we've got anemia and bleeding. Metabolic, we have hyper and hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, and acidosis. And then for respiratory, um, potentially atelectasis, pleural fusion, hypoxia, uh, pulmonary edema, respiratory failure, ARDS. But again, these aren't typically things that we see very often, especially for most of these adverse effects. But definitely something to be looking out for. Now, for our common concentrations that we find this medication, ultimately, whatever formulation we're going to see is going to commonly be 4 micrograms per ml concentration, and this is really the maximum concentration that we can give it for administration. So, so a lot of times for continuous IV infusion, we're going to see like 400 micrograms and 100 mls of 0.9% saline, or smaller mixtures like 200 micrograms and 50 mls, 80 micrograms and 20 mls, or that said, if you actually have this going at a pretty high rate, um, you can potentially get your pharmacy to mix up 1,000 micrograms and 250 mLs. Now, as for common dosing, um, this really actually I found has varied from facility to facility in terms of what the, the max dosing goes on this. Um, we can use it both with or without a loading dose. Uh, if we do a, an initial loading dose, that this is one microgram per kilogram, and we do want to give this slowly over 10 minutes. Be careful and watch for bradycardia and hypotension specifically when you're giving this loading dose. As far as the maintenance infusion, again, these numbers definitely vary depending on where you're looking at, but in general, we can say that our dose can be anywhere from 0.2 to 1.4 micrograms per kilogram per hour, and then we're going to titrate this to maintain an ordered rascal. Now, as far as the pharmacokinetics go, it has a rapid onset. Um, we're not real sure the peak or the duration of this medication, um, but we do know that it is metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine, and there is no antidote. 
Now, when it comes to our nursing considerations, um, this really should only be administered by a person who's specifically trained in the use of sedatives for procedural sedation, uh, having that knowledge and training. Rescue equipment definitely should be available, uh, i.e. code car, ambu bag, all that stuff, especially when you're using this on non-intubated patients and especially for procedural sedation. We do want to monitor blood pressure, heart rate and rhythm, respirations, their airway integrity, and continuous pulse oximetry during its use. Now, if there is some sort of medical intervention that's required for bradycardia or hypotension, then we, you know, we want to look at things like either decreasing or stopping the infusion, uh, increasing the rate of IV fluids that are being administered, uh, you can elevate the lower extremities temporarily, uh, or even using vasopressor agents if it's something that we need to continue. Now monitor for both a transient hypertension as well as hypotension potentially during the loading dose infusion. Know that patients may remain arousable and alert when they're stimulated during the infusion of this medication. And then finally, like I talked about earlier, the patients really may not require an artificial airway and the mechanical ventilation during the infusion um, if they are able to maintain their own airway, which oftentimes we find that they are able to as we're not typically going to see that respiratory depression. All right, and then finally for some relevant laboratory studies, we may see an increase in BUN, sodium, potassium, our ALK-FOS, gamma-glutamyl, transferase, GGT, bilirubin, or AST and ALT. It may decrease calcium and magnesium levels. Uh, it may increase or decrease glucose levels, and it may decrease red blood cell count. All right, so dexmedetomidine, Presidex, a uh, pretty interesting medication, especially when we get down in the weeds and how it works. Uh, it definitely works a little bit differently than some of our other sedatives, but can give us, uh, in some patients, you know, a very effective uh, sedation, a calming medication. And one of the really nice things is if, if it is effective for a particular patient, and they're having trouble uh, staying calm during the extubation process, we can actually have this medication on and keep it going through the entire extubation and even post-extubation as well. All right, so a lot of good information in here. I hope you guys were able to get some, some good info out of this lesson. So I hope that you guys found this information useful. If you did, please leave me a like on the video down below. Uh, it really helps YouTube know to show this video to other people out there, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading the comments that you guys leave, and I try to respond to as many people as I can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you're willing to show me and this channel is truly appreciated, so thank you guys so very much. If you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can find links to both the YouTube and Patreon membership down below. Head on over there and check out some of the perks that you guys get for doing just that. As well as check out some of the links to other nursing gear, as well as some awesome t-shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson that I release. Otherwise, in the meantime, here's a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.